Hi, it's Lyle from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. And today I'm going to be showing you how to get a very plain um, rocking horse and using IOD moulds and Annie Sloan paint, turn it into a beautiful bougie fairground horse. Okay, so this is the horse as I bought it. Um, it's it's old dish. It's, it's not like my antique horse but it, it's old but it's not uh what do i not like about it it's obviously had quite a few repairs it's got a crack running along here that runs around here it's got clunky fixes here and here and the paint job i think is very masculine i want something a little bit more girly and a little bit more feminine so i'm really going to go to town and just try and change the whole look on this piece so how am i going to do it well the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put some molds on i'm just going to tell you which molds i use if you are new to my channel and new to molding uh, i'll get martin to put the mold in one up one one on one video up there and you can see exactly from start to finish the process of molding but for those that are used to me doing molds then these are the molds that i used to do my horse i have used olive crest um he loves me uh the primitive mold trimmings too and I keep forgetting about this was acanthus, acanthus. Man, you're going to have your work cut out. These, <laughs> these all need a good clean. Right, so these are the moulds that I used. But one mould would have done. I mean, I could probably have done the whole horse just with this one. but And I haven't done too many, but I've done enough. Um, I'll show you what I've done so far. It's just to kind of... This is what I've done. Um, and I also have another lot of these. The schools so let's get on because first of all i want the molds to be on it but then obviously i want to be able to um i, I want to see because the background of the carpet <laughs> well it, it, it was, that's just, right if i pick it up a bit would you be able to see it yes there that's what i've done so far yeah okay so and the rope mold now i'm just going to put my glue on this little bag that i'm using as a palette and it's the no nails glue i'm using it's the real no nails glue, not the cheap version. Okay, so where am I going to be putting the moulds? Let's start and put some of the... Let's start with trying to camouflage some of these parts here that look ugly. So I'm going to start with ones like this. And as I've explained multiple times, many times over, you need to make sure you put your glue right to the very edges of your mould. You don't want your moulds coming off. Now, in my head, I already want to keep this. In Martin's head, he's wanting to sell it. <laughs> in Martin's head, I'm going, oh, I can ship that. I can go in a box. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the first piece that I'm trying to camouflage, making sure that I've pushed it down on the horse properly and that it's nice and tidy. Um, I've got my other brush here just to kind of unwind that. So that's the first one on. I have done it in two halves. I sometimes think if you're doing, because obviously one, one side will be one half of these and the other side will be the other half. So I've kind of multiplied it by two for each side, if that makes sense. I think it does. Because um, whatever I do on this side, I'll be doing on the other side. I'll try and put some of the big ones on first. I know you, they can be, get a little bit boring, but sometimes people like to see how I position things. So I'm trying to kind of do this more about positioning. Now, this this ugly part goes right across there. So I'm going to try and do something like here, just to kind of get that part up in there. Take away from some of that that ugliness that has it's just been repaired throughout the years and that's how it's kind of I think there's a lot of little people have <clears throat> jumped I, up and yeah, down on this I think it's it's not like my my wooden horse that kids can ride on well Poppy's always trying to get on it but um, I think this one is probably more for decor and kids have been on it and its legs have suffered some, some, some damage 
already you can see there's a lot more movement. It's starting to look a little bit better already and I've only done some simple things. Now, let's just do the little pieces and parts that I'd worked out along the way. First of all, I think I want these little stars. These are from the primitive mold. I want those to go on here, pushing them down. And I've got three of these. It's a little bit cracked there, so I thought that might, and I don't mind it getting rid of those lines. I, I think they're quite masculine again. There is nothing wrong with a masculine horse. I'm not saying there is, I'm just saying. Not what you want. Well, yeah. Because I'm obviously painting this like I'm going to keep it. There we go. That's that. Now I have a little bird for this section here. I just kind of looked at where I wanted them to go and what sort of shape they were and thought, where am I going to put all these? And I thought that would look nice there. That one there. And now... I've got these flowers for here and I have a different flower for the other side. I thought it just might make it a little bit more interesting. Make sure there's no ear pockets, that's quite important. there and for these long sort of shapes up here I'm going to put the hearts on here I'm trying not to take too long it's just so you understand what I'm what I'm about here and that heart on there and then what did I think I was going to do in here Kind of making it up as I go along. I thought I quite like this shape here. Now I'm going to take some of the rope mold. The rope mold is going to do quite a lot of this sort of almost quite a lot of the camouflaging element of like these cracks around here but I just want to kind of I'm jumping about I'm going to have to get some scissors to cut and fix up in there or a clay tool but I can get that in a minute um, bring this using a brush that's when my fingers end up getting really sticky and messy right now I'm going to need a clay tool to fix that I don't know why I haven't brought any and I'm just going to break this off here because I want to do something I think actually if I do this edge it'll be nicer because I'm up against it. No, that way. Like that. And I'll move this part here. Because I want to put, um, I thought I might put one of these on this edge. I'm going to, I don't want to do this just now because I haven't got a clay tool to do it with. So I'll, you can see I'm going to cut that here and I'm going to apply this flower down here. Right. So that's that sort of kind of, you can see where this is going to go. The next things I'm going to do is I'm going to put this around this neck part here to cover that, that, that last, that, that crack that's going around the neck. And I have got lots more sort of kind of flowers and shapes to go along here. So I'll go on and I'll do a little bit more and then I will show you what I've done 
so far. I'm, I just I don't want to proceed any further unless I've got a clay tool to try and fix this. Okay, so I've retrieved a, a clay tool now, so we should be just getting it a little bit more refined. Um, I'm just sticking these on here. I'll put that shape in the centre there. Now, it's not my intention to put the mould around absolutely, the goat mould absolutely around everything, but it is my intention to do it around the saddle, not round here, because I'll use paint to, to change that. Any sort of obvious kind of crackiness, you just want to get rid of that. I am going to put the rope mold around the bridle though. Um, so I was so excited when I found this yesterday. I mean, I only got this yesterday, and I'm doing a video on it today. It's just that I got absolutely giddy. That's true. I was still giddy, but I was unwell yesterday, which meant that I couldn't actually do anything about it. I was just, I just had to kind of bide my time almost. I'm wondering whether I could just go from there to here. I'll get round to the other side in a minute. This is where it's going to need a little bit of TLC. If you feel you need a little bit of water on your clay tool, to make it kind of smooth out, well, that's fine, you can do that. Sorry, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking, concentrating. Right, so that looks quite nice. And we're going to put one of these nice big um, flowery shapes up the top on that circular part of the bridle. It's just to give you an idea of what I'm going to be doing up here. And obviously the rope mould will continue from here to here. Obviously I can see there's a little bit here. I wonder if I could just almost stretch that up touch there. Um, clay tools are brilliant if you're going to be really getting into moulds. They kind of, they kind of enable you to manipulate clay and smooth it all at the same time. And you get them very inexpensively on Amazon, don't you, Marty? Oh, the kind of thing that I've bought dozens and dozens and dozens of those sets of those tools because for my classes yeah, exactly i used to run classes so it, it, we have loads of these kind of things um right so this part down here where we're going to come back to it so let's just whack that bit there off because i don't think we're going to need it i think we are going to need a little bit of i can't make up my mind whether i'm going to put a heart or a flower i think a heart might be nicer but we'll need to kind of almost do that. Let's see if we can manipulate this into space. Now, I'm not going to keep you much longer on this. You can see where this is going. I'm obviously, I'm putting moulds onto, onto my horse. That's what I'm doing. And um, any parts that I maybe need to come back and embed a little bit of clay into it, like I, I think I maybe would put a little bit of clay in here. Just attach that top part onto there, like that. So that, that's that. Uh, I'll finish off the rope round here and then I'm going to um, flip it round and do the other side. And then once they've been on for a while, um, oh, I need to fix this, I will be um, um, priming it with Zinzer bin just because it's very shiny. I don't know what kind of paint. It might not, it's not furniture paint that it's been painted with. Um, so I want to make sure that when I put, because I'll be painting mine with chalk paint, um, whether I make it shiny at the end, I don't know, but right now I want to get rid of the shine so I can paint it. So I won't probably be painting the bottom half, the runners, I'll probably keep those black, but um, for the sake of just resetting it and giving me a blank canvas, I am going to be doing 
um, doing it all white. But I'll come, I'll come back and show you that. I'm just trying to fix these little cracks. Right. Okay, I'll go on and do this. Okay, so the moulds are thoroughly dry. This is how hard they are. Hard, ready to paint. Uh, I've got Zinsser bin here. I'm going to give it two coats. I'm going to do one coat and then um, let the other one dry and then do another coat. I'm applying it with a, a kind of soft brush. I want to, I'm doing this for two reasons. I want to kind of start with a prime surface, kind of reset on the colours that are cut on it anyway. But the second reason I'm doing it is, is I'm not quite sure what paint this has been painted. It, it's very shiny. And even though Annie Sloan is a no pre prep paint, I just want to make sure that um, any of my paint sticks to it for years to come. So um, I'm just going to paint this. I'm going to paint the moulds as well. Um, I'm not too focused on making sure that, because they're going to all be painted, but just making sure that there's no, uh, none of the surface that hasn't got the primer on it. So this is going to take a wee bit of time. I'm still debating on the black down the bottom. I think I'll probably, I'll probably just leave the black just now. Um, I won't prime it. No, I will prime it too. I'll maybe just give it one coat, just enough to give the paint some tooth. But I'm going to get on and do this now. Okay. Okay, so paint. Um, it's all white now. It's had two coats of primer and I'm going to be painting it with Annie Sloan paint. But I want a really sort of cheerful, happy, but not too in your face colour palette. So I liberated long and hard of my colour paint palette. So it's this, these colours here. So I've mixed this colour here, which is Annie Sloan's Furl, a little bit of Barcelona orange, a little bit of Horn Flower, which so is brown, orange and the Furl to make, which is the sort of, makes a sort of chantrezy sort of colour. Next colour, which is this one here, which is the berry sort of colour. It's burgundy and a little bit of white made the burgundy. Um, I wanted a sort of more minty green on mine, so I added a little bit of Antibes green, a little bit of Provence and a little bit of Versailles, which has made me there, this colour. This is Capri Pink, which is the hot pink with a tiny tad of um, Frida Blue in it, just to take the edge off it for that colour. And I've just got plain um, Oxford Navy in here. So that's going to be the colours that I'm painting the horse along with some white. There will be black at the end. The horse itself is going to be grey, but I'm going to do a sort of dappled grey. So I want some of it darker and some of it lighter with white spots on it. So we're going to have to do a bit of a blend. So I've mixed dark, but it's probably going to be much lighter than this. But I am going to do the tail and the mane in the dark colour before I start. I want florals and I've decided on, I've seen these kind of abstracty florals. So just round circles with black in them. Um, I'm going to be doing some of that. I like that. Um, these are obviously not the same colour as my colour palette, but this is my colour palette here. So I think this is going to be quite pretty. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to paint the tail and the mane the dark grey. Um, there's nothing very exciting that you're going to, you're going to miss um, in this. I'm just going to make sure that it's had two nice coats of this dark grey. Um, I think the black made it look awfully harsh and so I'm hoping that the grey will slightly soften it up a bit. Grey can sometimes do that. Sometimes if you want black, you think it's a little bit harsh, then sometimes if you add it and do grey instead, then it makes it look less severe. So I'm going to go on and I'm going to paint the male, make the male, the, the mane and the tail this lovely grey. And then I'm going to come back and we'll start blending the grey into the legs and onto the body. Yeah. Okay. Now I've got a pencil and I've done some rough. I'm going to work on one side first and then flip it over and do the other. And I've done some just some rough circles and leaves here, here, under this scroll and up its leg here. So, so I'm going to try and avoid that so that my base colour from my bright colours is white. 
Now I want to make it dapply grey. I've got a small brush. I'm going to use quite a bit of water on my brush down on my mix mat. Um, I'm going to start with the darkest colour and butt that up against the main first of all. So let's kind of, and I'm kind of going to kind of try and blend this. I'm not too worried if any of the paint gets onto the mould right now. Um, there's time to deal with all of that. Um, I want it much lighter here. Whoops. Um, I'm kind of like almost blending it with this tiny little paintbrush. So that it's kind of different shades of grey. I think it's probably because I've got all that white primer underneath going to need two coats. So maybe, maybe not. It's drying quite quickly. I just, I want, I want it. I'm going to kind of let this dry a little bit and then I'm going to put more dark on this edges and blur it out a bit. Um, Because I want, I want different shades of um, grey on it, um, like it's a dapple grey in mirror. Um, I've looked at loads. I have looked at so many different rocking horses, fairground horses, you name it. But I, I want mine to not be so harsh. I love all the fairground art. I just love it. But some of them, I think, are maybe just a little bit too bright. I mean, I know that I'm all about the colour, but it was more the sort of, I didn't want to paint my horse pink or green to start with. I, I, I want it more, a little bit more traditional. So I'm going to kind of do this. I'm going to get Martin to come back when this is a little bit drier and we'll kind of blend some colours into it. Because um, I've kind of saturated a little bit. Let's see if I can mix a little bit. And it'll start to hopefully take shape once it, once it's dry and it's got the spots on it. I'm gonna kind of just leave that be just now and let it dry. But you understand what I'm going to do is I'm going to do round all of the legs. I'm only going to do one side at a time. So, and I'm going to draw more of these um, sort of circular sort of patterned flowers on here on this leg as well some leaves. It's pretty rough this up this is like many coats of paint. So and I'll do some coming up from this ankle as well and I'll just go all the base coat like round here and if not I'll probably do some flowers on the rump as part up here. Um but I'm going to get my sort of base coat of grey on before I do any more. So I'm going to do one coat and then we'll come back and we'll get on to the second coat. Okay, so now I'm going to start putting this sort of second coat, this sort of highlights. What I did was, because I'd drawn out the shapes, I had to abandon that really quickly because obviously I've got so little space to manoeuvre in and it's more important that I get my base colour down first. I can come back over and just paint the flowers on top of it, but I, it was just getting too complicated. At this stage, if you've put moulds and things, don't worry if your moulds start to look a little bit untidy. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get our base colour, how we want the horse to look underneath before all the ornateness. And this is the layers. That This is the kind of important part. So I've got a sort of small, messy looking brush and I'm dipping it in the white. So I want to start, I want to kind of end up with sort of darker edges around here and my highlight being in the middle. So now I'm just going to add my paints, not dry, but it's it's not wet either. And it's just, I'm going to try and put some highlights into here and give it a little bit of different shades of grey because that's the kind of dappledness of it all. And you're just going to have to work a wee, trying to get it just the way you want it. Um, it, it Kind of, there's no real rhyme or reason to this. It's just a lot of blending to get to get it to where you want it to go. Um, 
on the larger areas I used my just my normal my sort of blending brush and I just put white on it and I just I kind of blended the white and kind of highlighted it with this brush which is an easier brush to maneuver but I don't want the moulds all covered in the grey too much and this is kind of a wieldier although it's a small blending brush it's kind of a little bit I want darker shades coming up from the bottom of the feet so um, I'm just blending it all out now but you can see already I've managed to let me just move back to this I've managed to kind of like lighten up and darken up the edges by putting the lighter tones in the middle and you can just do this until you're kind of happy with it this is all I'm going to do I mean with my actual horse I'm just going to keep blending and blending and blending until I get what I think I'm looking for and um, it would obviously be a little bit lighter around the eyeball here you know up on the brow so a little bit around here and that is all I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a look of depth because before when it was all white it looked very flat. So this is all I'm going to do. It's going to take me quite a while to do it. So, But these things are important. So this is all I'm going to do with my horse next. All over, all the grey, I'm going to start blending it together. This has just been painted dark just now. So just all over until I get the grey the way I want it. What I'm doing now is I'm just painting this background part of the kind of, what are we calling it? The flaps, saddle. the flaps of the saddle, this part here. Now, every colour that I use, because I put the primer underneath, is going to need two coats, um, just because it's so stark and white underneath it. Um, I'm just trying to get under and around these moulds. It'll make it a little bit easier for when I go to paint those in and taking it right to the edge. Um, you're not missing anything, this is quite dull, um, it's just going to be a little bit of a sort of, going to take a bit of time. I'll do this side blue and the other side blue, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the saddle part. Um, let me just get a brush, the dark pink. So this is going to be pink. Um, basically what the next stages are, are just blocking out the colours for everything. There's not a huge amount of sort of, you're not missing a huge amount. It's just I'm blocking out all the colours and be painting in all of the moulds. But I'll come back sporadically so you can see how this is all, you know, coming, how it's all coming along. But um, just going around all the moulds and making sure that there's the paint is, there's no white parts of the mould. Um, but that's what I'm going to be doing next. It, this part here is going to be a little bit dull until we get on to the more sort of designy elements of it. Um, but uh, these things have to be done. So you just have to dig in and do them. Yeah. So once you've given the... Once I've done this two coats of blue, I was just showing you the side again so that I can flip this side round. Um, this is how it looks when it's had two coats. So it's had two coats of the blue, two coats to halfway with the pink, two coats here, and I think it's only had one coat of green, but I think that's all it needs. So now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm this I'm trying not to labour too much on the boring parts. I'm just really going round the moles and picking the colours from the colour palette and giving everything two coats of colour. I can see there's a little bit of navy in there that I've missed, so I'll need to come back and do that. Um, these are quite good when you have to go around things because then you can see them as you go. And I will have to tip the horse upside down as well because I want to get under underneath these moulds. Um, so it's all done right. But yeah, you just have to take your time and try and make as nice a job as it of it as you can. Um, so once I've done this blue, I'll be obviously giving it a second coat of the blue. And then what I'll do is I'll just paint these shapes in the chantreuse green colour. I'll do the stars. I'll do my lighter pink for the hearts. And 
I'll see how the rest goes. I just, I want it to kind of stand out. And then I think once I've done all the I'll, I'll double coats on this side, we'll come back and we'll start to put detail on because we've still got the flowers and everything to paint in. And I'm going to add gold and the spots on the dappleness. And so there's quite a lot to do. So I don't want to leave it on the base coating. So take it, this side here is going to be base coated and ready so that we can start doing the design in earnest. Okay, so that took quite a bit of time. We're on a different day now. Um, everything down to here on the pony has had two coats. The hoofs and the bottom rocky part has only had one in it. From here down, he's tidying up. Everywhere up the top has had two. Now, yesterday, I've done the whole of the other side just today. Now, top tip. If you're doing something like this, I take photographs. There's a bit of a spoiler alert, but these are the photographs of the opposite side so that I know what I'm doing on this side. So I'm going to set my photographs to the side and I'm going to try and do all the wowy quick bits first that make things pop to keep you, you, you know, interested. So when brushes for the job, always try and pick the right brush. This is a flat, long brush, not a super soft kind of, you know, not this kind fluffy. of brush, fluffy brush. That's right, Martin, because I'm going to be dry brushing over the top of the tail like this, just to bring out all of that detail. Um, I always think with these sorts of things, because there's quite a lot you have to kind of, dig deep on the quick wins are the good ones so let's just do this first and that's a quick win for us now we will have to do the front and we will have to go back and do this part at the back just to make sure that we've got it all just right but that's okay for a start of the tail so we've brought the detail out in the tail and we'll obviously be doing the same because the other side doesn't have this detail in the main it just has it doesn't have it, so I haven't done this part on the other side. So I think the probably the better way to do it is kind of tip it towards me. And when we do the front, we'll we'll revisit the top at the same time. But I'll do the bits I can see right now. Uh, you don't need a huge amount of paint on your brush for dry brushing, just a little bit. Make sure that it's not too much. And make sure you're going, you don't go down that way because you'll just fill in all the detail. You're having to go the, the opposite way from the way that your detail works, if you know what I mean. It's the same when you're doing moulds, and we'll get to those in a minute. I'm going to do probably the rest of this off camera because I want I not don't want it to go over my finish that I've done, but you get the general idea. Oh, do you see that? Now, this is one of those things that you kind of need all your colours on hand because as you do it, little things happen and you need to fix them as you go. There's a lot, been a lot of wee kind of fixes that I've had to do. I'm going to put a raw colour down here. So we'll call that quits for just now. That's that. Now, let's do these moulds here because these are other quick wins. And again, what kind of brush am I using? A flat one like this, right? And what I'm going to do is, and the secret to the gold is, well, make sure you give it a good start, but um, I cannot always use the lid as just to offload it. And again, you're going this way across your moulds. And that will... Oh, sorry. Sorry, Matt. That's my fault. You're sorry. very close. Um, now, can you see where I touched the horse there? that tiny little bit of gold. This is why I'm saying have your palette beside you. This mold's actually cracked, but it cracked as I put it on. And I thought, oh, that will just make it look like it's got a bit of age to it. So I wasn't I wasn't being too pernickety almost. So when you've done something like this and you've got a little bit of gold, just go back to your initial grey, get your brush and just mix up a grey that's going to work with your, with your design and just get rid of it. It needs to be a little bit darker. Um, and these are the things that you kind of just fix as you go along. 
and I can also see a bit here where I've kind of just there that was a bit of different color paint so you can see what I'm doing with my gold and because it's always really quite exciting to watch I'll do it again because it's the things that really make it make it pop I'm doing this because there's quite a lot of detail to start painting in so I'm taking all the quick wins first quite like to kind of really touch up on the top of my moulds with the gold so that it looks gold from when you're looking above it. Right, so we've got our gold on there. So we've got done our tail and we've got our mains finished, we've got our gold on there. Now I'm going to put my lid on my gold because it dries up really quickly and start looking at my images. So let's get going. So the first thing I did is I've got this this blue here. Oh, this band here on the front, when I said I give everything two coats, this band on the front here, I only gave it one because I quite like the white showing through on this band. It kind of gave it a little bit of age that I quite liked. So I just left that. I did not give to that bit there two coats. And this pink, you had two hot, hot pink colours. And then with the lighter pink, I just did a sort of kind of, kind of just wiped it with my finger around there just to give it a little bit of more sort of depth and tone as opposed to one flat solid colour and um, that's what I did there now brushes I think probably you're better painting the majority of this in with a skip brush so and as per usual put some on your palette add some water so it moves and just kind of get ready to kind of paint it in so this all you would think oh this is going to take ages but it, it, it doesn't actually take that long um, remember when you're doing things like this to do other things at the same time so that you're kind of breaking it up and you're not just working solidly on this and all I did with this blue was I ran it into this groove. You're never going to get these things perfectly um, perfectly smooth because the carving dictates really the shape that your brush makes. But you can try your best. You know, you can you can try. Down here I painted this all in blue according to my picture. And this is where you could really swap your brush from your you could swap from your um, liner, your rigger brush, to a different brush to do this part here. But then you're going to need it for back up here. So I just, I don't bother swapping. So this all in here is going to be blue. So you can, let me just see where I went with it on the other side. I was thinking I did it wrong, but I'm looking at it from the opposite way. You know? It's that whole decoupage thing upside down again. Ah, then. <laughs> Paint that in. I have to give this to coat, so I'm just showing you the undercoat, and then I'll go away off camera, and I'll do the actual, the second coat. So if my first coat's not exactly pristine, I'm not too worried about it because I can, I'll can. i tidy it up with my second coat. Right, okay. Like I'm not happy with this under edge here, but I'll fix it when I, when I do my second coat. Right, so this is going to be blue. And round in this little shape here and this is where sometimes maybe changing the brush I've got my ochre yellow, yellow, yellow colour I've changed my brush to a different liner it's a thicker liner this one and I'm painting in here in this sort of triangle no not triangle diamond shape I'm doing this colour here Now, 
I might have to swap my brush out here to get up in here. If you make any mistakes, it doesn't matter because you can just paint them back in with the navy like I've just done there. Or the pink, whatever one you touch up against. That's why I'm saying you need all your paint on hand just so you can fix your monumental boo-boos that I'm doing right now. I shouldn't show you all this on camera, but it's the only way that you can really do these things sometimes. Right, and this is going to need two coats and it's going to need a bit of tidying up around the pink. So that is what's going there. Now, these flowers, what I did was I took my blue again. So I'm dipping back in my blue, making sure I've got water on my brush. I'm not going to change to a different line. I'm just going to use the same one because it's got a nice point on the end. And I literally just made myself some leaves coming from these flowers. This is where it kind of gets awkward when you're going in the depths of mouldings and carvings because you're never going to get it just, just perfect. And I think I'll do something like, like this. So I've got leaves to do here. And obviously these are going to need two coats as well. So leaves on here, some nice leaves on here. Now I understand this might be a little bit boring, but it just kind of gives you an idea of what I'm thinking of. Now, we discussed at the beginning about how I was going to do flowers all over the legs and everything, but you'll see when I turn it round that it actually doesn't need anything like that. It's... It's just lovely as it is and I think I tried a test on the other side with the flowers and I thought it's just a little bit too much and that's me saying that so it obviously is too much. I might just do another small one here. I want that to touch. I'm going to have to do a bit tidying up in there because I can't really get my brush. so that's the leaves then what did I do after that I got my yellow my ochre colour again making sure you've got water and I'm just going to use the same brush again I think this one here the difference between this liner and this liner is obviously the one with the yellow on is wider. The one with, this is a much thinner, this is a number one rigger brush. I don't know what this is. I think it might be, it might be a three. Um, kind of looks like it. Um, okay, so, oh, that wasn't a good start, was it? I'm going to be, I really shouldn't be doing this because the blue isn't dry. But it's just to show you what I'm doing. I was saying to Martin yesterday, bucket list painting, things that I've always thought I would like to paint. Well, one of them was a rocking horse. And I know this isn't a great big fancy rocking horse, but just being able to paint it, I think, is a nice thing because I think I've always wanted to paint one. So it's a bucket list painting job for me, this one. This is going to go around here like this. Martin, you're awfully quiet today. Are you holding your breath while I do this? Yeah. yeah. Right. I've seen the other side. It's gorgeous. <sighs> so you can imagine what this is going to look like when it's had its two coats. Um, of colour and obviously your second coat is your tidying up one so you can make it all you can make it tidier on your second coat right so that is going around there like that 
and then what I did was I got the same colour and this is where I needed to do a lot of different fixing because it touched on the other side up against my moulds so have your light blue on hand for going around here see there's a touch and there's another one see it's hard to get around the moulds without touching them anyway so Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm being true to myself and I'm being honest. I mean, it's just the way it is. You're just going to have to touch it up. So this is going to come all the way around this lot of molds. Now, I'm just trying to do as much as I can in this first part of filming. around there. I'm at a funky angle. Yeah, I'm making that so that you can understand I've got to bring it round and I, d I brought it. I br this is where I'm thinking uh, on camera it could look really bad but I'll try. Try and keep my shaky hands at bay. Um, I want to have this line. Come around here. And just be careful that you're not leaning upon it to something else. And that line's going to be there. Uh, what else can I do before this dries? Um, the hearts. I uh, just need to see them up close. Because that picture doesn't really show what I did. I think maybe I just... With these little flowers here, I got the green first. And I kind of did... These do get covered in gold, so oh, see, I'm leaning on it now. So, when we come back, I'll have done all these two coats and I'll have fixed all of the parts where I've laid on things and made a bit of a mess. Um, if I go back to just get that brush in the water and get a different brush, this one here might be quite nice, maybe it's a little bit big, take this one instead. Uh, back to my gold and the gold I start to bring out this on the rope mould. I can see in here there's a little bit of grey that I need to fix as well. Can you see that? Like that's a little bit untidy, a wee bit crude there. And I don't want it to look that way so I'll get that in a minute. To here and then This starts to make such a difference. Probably if I do do it that, you won't notice that I went over that with the yellow. Get more in the gold. And offload it. Remember and offload it. So it just shows you, you can take something very plain, like a plain rocking horse, add moulds, 
and you can turn it into a fairground horse um, with all the sort of use. Very simply, I mean, this hasn't been a complicated project. Uh, this, this really hasn't. I mean, the moulds do half the work for you and then the rest you just need to paint in. It's not a... I did this across the wee bud. Uh, where else did I do? I'm going to stop and double up on the colours uh, before I go too far ahead um, because I don't want to jump too far ahead and it, it kind of not makes sense if you know what I mean but I didn't cover all of this I just kind of did this and then just went kind of over the top of it like that and obviously I went over the stars and the gold. It's starting to take shape, but obviously I can see there is a lot of there's a lot of touching up to do now. Like there, 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 the grey up there, down and around here. It's it's just this is when you do something like this, this is just what you have to, it's just what you expect, you, especially when you're painting in moulds. Because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put, when this has had two coats, we're going to put a hot pink line in here. We're going to put pink in here with a spot, spots along here. There's a white line that goes around there. The hot pink vein of the leaf goes in. Um, and when these are dry, these have some gold on them, then we'll start working to here. But you can understand why suddenly I was going, I don't think I need a lot of flowers on this because it, because it's 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 busy, it's, it's got enough. Now, I'm going to do a spoiler alert and I'm going to turn it round just so you can see where we're heading. Um, I'll just get back a bit um, and move my coffee because that won't be good. It's a good job it's not so heavy. This is what we're aiming to get to. Um, obviously, we'll put the spots on for the dapple grey. I've done the eye, and I'll show you how I did my eye. Um, gold's running along in here. We've got all this finished. I still have to outline these leaves with a fine liner, um, but this is how it looks, and it needs all this touched up here. But this has been touched up and fixed. The head is all fixed. The tail is done. So we just need to let the other side dry. We'll do our second coat. I'll come back and I'll show you. And I can see there's a bit of pink in there where it should be white where the mouth is, where the teeth are. But apart from that, this is where we're heading to. Well, so this just finishes off drying because it's had its two coats. I am just going to put the spots on for the dapple. Now what I'm using is a sort of short, flat-ended brush for the big spots and I'm just twirling it round in a circle like that. And I'm using just the original white. And I just kind of like... They're not not too many, but you know, are the bigger ones, but enough that it looks like, you know, that it's got spots. Maybe one more here, and the same. I'll move this over a bit, Martin, so you can film it. Same here. Pulling your brush around in a circle and it'll make a nice, it'll make a nice natural circle without having to put any effort into it. That should do. And some more here. Yeah, that's quite a big one. And 
just the seam on the legs. And then what I did was once I'd done all my big spots, um, I just used an acrylic pen. It's not a POSC, I'm using it today, it's an Artistro White um, because I don't have any POSC, but their they're, Artistro pens are good as well, so there's no problem. There we go. I think that's about the same amount that I've done on the other side. So I've given my Artistro a shake, just giving it to charge it, and then I just kind of went, so this sort of size and then a dot. So this sort of size and then a dot, this sort of size, dot, this sort of size, dot, this sort of size and a dot. So you get the, you get the concept. Just dotting it over it. And the same, I'll be doing the same over here, but I'm, I'm not going to bore you with any more of that dot is nonsense. So, got the spots <coughs> on. Um, as you can Excuse hear, me. Martin and I are still very healthy. <laughs> <coughs> I'm doing it now. Now, I want to get my pink band on here. And I used this Posca, which is, uh, what colour is it? Raspberry, it says. It's not one I use very often. It's nearly the same as this hot pink when it goes on to the blue. So I thought it was it's just slightly easier to control. Slightly easier. I painted the other side, but I, I thought, well, while I'm, while I'm on camera, I'll use something that's a little bit easier. And Still not easy because it's it's carved. I might have to use paint to fix that end. Then what did I do? I have done my veins and my leaves, and you you saw me put um some other colour on there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my gold brush again wherever it is. I've got so many brushes, Matt. I'll show you. This is just some of them. They are everywhere. I think I've used every brush known to man. Um, it's good to have a sort of, where is it? This one will be fine. Um, it's just to go do the gold over here. More gold. And I just touched up here. Here. I've done this one. We've seen those, we've done that. And on this part here, I did gold on my flowers. And um, on these sort of kind of buttony shapes. And then what I did was I got a liner. Uh, just need sorry. To put, sorry, Matt, in here. Do you? You're really close. You're really close. I'm trying to show them what you're doing. Uh, um, I just did this round here. Yeah. And I just finished this edge with the gold all the way around. So it's the same on the other side as well. And we'll be doing the same on the front. Um, you're not really missing too much. It's just repetitive stuff, you know, over and over again. These um, little um, flowers here were done in gold. Like that. I, don't, I didn't touch the daisies with any of the gold. And I'm going to do a big daisy on the saddle. Um, that's going to be my next sort of fixed all the sort of parts up here that weren't tidy. I've done redone all the bits that weren't nice looking. I um, 
we now need the blue, the light blue, um, because we need that to do, um, where are the spots? In here. So light blue spots go in these shapes down here. Sorry, I wasn't even looking, I was so busy looking at the picture. And in these ones up here, I put gold spots. Like that. Now the last thing I need to do, once we've got all this tidied up, is I need to get my white, um, I do have this Posca, but it's a thinner one. I need this one for um, outlining here in white. It's not hugely noticeable. It, all it's doing is just kind of tidying up the edges of those hand-drawn leaves. Like that. Now, I'm going to get on and finish this up. This line here has the blue dots. So it's just alternating from one colour of dot to another colour of dot. Um, where's the brush that I used for this one? I keep losing them now. Put the lid on this for a minute. I think it might be in the water. So I'm back in the blue again and uh, this is going to have and it carries on down one of the horsey saddle pack which goes along here it's kind of hard to do dots on this because it's an angle I'm going to go along here like this. And I might need it a little bit on in here. This part here I can't do just now because it's, it's not on two coats, this part. Um, so I'm going to get on and I'm going to finish this whole side now just by putting the detail in. The white Posca was just a tiny little fluted edge around here. I think when people do things like this, they don't carve them the exact same on both sides. They're never kind of, because there seems to be less space on this side than the other side, so they'll be slightly different. And I just put some of the pink spots down here like this and that pretty much is the side i'll get this all done get the spots the dapple finished these parts tidied up we'll turn it to the front the front's pretty much done because I've just did the, it was just gold that got rubbed over here and on here. I'll show you the eye and then we'll paint the daisy on and then we'll get to finishing the bottom and we're getting there now. So this is how it looks from the front. I put the spots on, burnished this with the gold, did some gold in the nostrils and put some pink in it with ears. Now I'm going to do, and it's got one eye which has been done. So now we're going to do the other eye on camera, which is dangerous, I know, but we'll see how we go. Um, I just had a reasonably big sized pupil. So I just need to put water on the brush. Just make sure if your chalk paint's sticking on anything to make sure you've got a little bit of water in it all. Should smooth out quite nice. 
Now, when you're doing something like this, you have to keep kind of looking to the other side. My eye on the other side is bigger. Um, just have a wee look um, on this side. Right, so that side, this side needs to be slightly bigger. And this is just, just you know, playing around with it until you get it just the way you want it. Right, let's call it quits at that. Now, then what I did was I dipped in the grey. And again, you're going to need maybe a little bit of water. And I just kind of darkened up round about the eye cavity with the grey. Oh, I'm going to that in a minute. And then eyelashes. Concentrate and get don't know if I had an eyelash on that side. Yeah, I need to just sort of the seam. On this side, I think I've got slightly more darker, but you get the you get I've got more of a sort of kind of thicker dark line on this little on the other side. Right, so I'll get back to the eye, then it's just a highlight, top and bottom, just to give it, because the apertures of the eyes before were just plain black and it made it look really soulless. So the front's all done, the sides are done now, I'm going to do the daisy on the top um, here, and I'm starting to put pattern down the bottom, so basically I'm just going like that with my brushes, the first coat of the blue, I'm going to come back and do it, and then we're going to do some gold detail, and then pretty much I'm going to leave it alone because I like it just the way it is, and I don't want to overwork it either, so, and that is surprising for me, and that's what, when I first planned this, I planned to do so many elaborate sort of flowers on it, but it, it really doesn't need it, I think it's because it's so, it's ornate with gold, as soon as I put the gold on it, I knew I didn't need it, and I think that's the thing, Right, so I've got some white down here on my palette and I'm just going to start with a circle. I'm doing white first before I put my sort of greeny yellow for the centre of my daisy just so that it really stands out like kind of basically sort of a kind of undercoat. Sorry Marty, I know it's not easy to film. Yeah. No, I've got you. Got me now. And I just swap my brush for one that's going to be do me a bit of daisy. What are my paint? And then When I'm doing a daisy, I kind of jump about with my my petals, just so that I can kind of even them all out as they go. And then next, once this dries, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be coming back, painting the centre green and finishing off the pattern at the bottom. I don't want to keep filming the same sort of repetitive stuff over and over again because I know hand painting, it's, although it's exciting for me, it's not very exciting for you guys to watch it repeatedly over and over again. Um, 
So I'm going to do this. This is going to need two coats as well. And once these little external leaves of my daisy are done, I'll come back and I'll put another petal over the top of these, but we'll let that dry first. Okay. Okay, I'm just doing this sort of, the last few things to show you. So can you see the shadowing I've done here? I'm just dipping in my original grey with quite a sort of dry brush and I'm just putting a little bit of shadowing under the chin along the whole arm. Just giving it, giving it a little bit of, just a little bit of kind of pop. And I'll be doing that on both sides, kind of under here and around, just giving it a little bit of shadow under here and around here. I've done some there and I'll be doing some around here as well. Just a little bit of the darker grey, just to kind of give it a bit of definition. What have you missed? I outlined my daisy in gold and I put a white line along here. I've got this blue line to finish to come to here and fix this part of the gold. But I'm working down here now on the, the bottom rung. Uh, I've got daisies. Um, what I need is I need some white on the bottom. Now, this isn't so much me and is the least pet paint brush that's a little bit kind of old. It's more like such stamping because I'm at an awkward position. So I'm just kind of like putting my brush and I'm just stamping with my paintbrush like that just round and round and round until I get a daisy shape and I'm just going around every one of these making them a little daisy and once I've done that I'm going to be getting the gold and I've got an outline to go around this little sort of rip crack shape like that. And then I'm going to get my white and doing a little white circle in here all the way along this outside. Now this edge here, oh, before I change brush and colours, I've got to go around the top of the hoop. Do that up. And then I'm just doing a kind of florally sort of pattern. Just around the top of the hoop. Like that. On both sides i've done it on your there i just have to finish the inside because it was the opposite way around daisies here and this part here i balanced it off here a minute ago and i did it probably won't balance this time this whole shape here because it needs another coat of blue i've got to take um is gold it's just there's a navy outline and this shape here is gold and the same old it needs a, a, a double coat of the board. So she's finished, all done. Was it difficult? Not at all. Just positioning moulds to where you think it's going to give it nice detail. Um, I think changing the colour of the horse really worked. The stark white, I didn't think, made it work so well. And I think by doing it grey with the spots, the dapple sort of effect, I think has given it a little bit more life and a little bit more sort of tone as well. It doesn't look as flat now. It's got some shaded areas. Um, it's just a lot of hand painting. Obviously, you have to do it in two coats and that's probably what takes up the time. But apart from that, anybody could get one of these and do something like this. Uh, it is a bit of a bucket list um sort of thing for me i've always looked at them i own a big one a wooden a solid wooden one and uh, it's an antique and i would never paint it but um I, i'll always look at them and think I'll, I'll one day i'll get a big one and do it but they're always really pricey and when i saw this one this one is in um solid wood it's hollow in the inside so it's very light um it's it's not obviously i think for children i think it's more of a decor horse but um still don't know what i'm going to do whether i'm going to sell it keep it give it to daisy i i just don't know 
see what happens when I when I start showing it off to people and whether I list it or not. Uh, I really don't have the room for it, but uh, I'm sure I could jam it, jam it in somewhere if I really <laughs> thought about it hard enough. <laughs> could I <have> married? Probably. <laughs> uh, I hope you've enjoyed this today. It just goes to show you what you can do with some molds and some paint. I mean, there is nothing complicated about this. It's just uh, time-consuming, yes and no. Just paint it, you know. Remember the right brush for the right, the, the right kind of detail that you're doing. If your brushes are too big, you're going to find it awkward. And there's a lot of touching up to do as you go along. I've sealed this with two coats of the... Um, shiny varnish today not my usual top coat because obviously I want this to last and last and last I don't want to have to repaint it or if I sell it I want it to be good so that's it for today Martin do you have anything the lovely Martin do you have anything to add to no, this no. Was a, that was a good one it was a good one it was no. a little bit different yeah uh, it, was a little well, bit it different. definitely it's true one of Lowe's bucket list ones she, she's always looking for this kind of thing and mm. they don't come up very often so they don't if you do see one grab it they don't come up very often. I was quite shocked. I mean, I paid probably what I would pay for a decent piece of furniture for this, but um, I do think that um, it will be, it, well, it's worth more to me now already just by doing what I've done to it. So I think, I'll, you know, if I, if I ever kind of want to sell it or if I decide to sell it, I'll get my money way back on it. So I'm okay with that. But yeah, I'm glad I've, I've had a chance to do one. So that's been it for today. Um, I have been well for me by Marley. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a like, give us a share, give us a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe. And the lovely Matt and I will be back next week, won't we, Marley? We will indeed. Okay. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.